got a video for you which describes the radical substitution mechanism of alkanes with halogens. So I'm using methane and chlorine as my example. So there's the overall reaction. You can see it's a substitution reaction because effectively we've taken a hydrogen off the methane and substitute it with one of these chlorines here. So it's different to an addition reaction where addition reactions you have two reactants making one product. Substitution reactions we have two reactants and two products. Now this reaction won't happen without some help if you like and it needs a condition of UV which is a form of radiation, form of energy. So the first step in this mechanism is called initiation and this is where the halogen molecule, so I'm going to draw it like this, I'm going to show the electron pair in the covalent bond and the UV radiation breaks this double bond. So enough energy to break the bond. You can see the way I've drawn this dotted line here, I've split the bond exactly down the middle so that this chlorine atom on the left receives one electron from the bond, this chlorine atom on the right receives one electron from the bond. And so they receive the same number of electrons from the bond, same, we use the word homo, homolytic fission is the name given to this type of bond breaking. We're going to create two very, very reactive particles, species called free radicals. So these are chlorine free radicals. This dot here represents this unpaired electron that each chlorine atom has now got. So that's homolytic fission. Another thing that's worth saying here is that initiation steps involve the reaction of a stable molecule, so this is our stable molecule here, and we produce two free radicals. So initiation, stable, makes two free radicals. The second part of the mechanism is known as the propagation stage. Now these actually always occur in a pair of steps, so I'm going to call the first one P1, propagation 1. And what happens in a propagation step is a stable molecule so I'm bringing the methane molecule into play now. A stable molecule is attacked by a radical. So we've just produced these chlorine radicals. And this chlorine radical is desperate for an electron to pair up with this one. And the way it does that is it grabs one of the hydrogens from this methane molecule. So it will produce an HCl molecule. And the remainder of the CH4 molecule is a radical now, so it's a methyl radical. So propagation steps always involve stable radical making stable radical. Now I said a minute ago, these always happen in pairs, so P2 now. We've generated another radical, which is again very, very reactive because of this unpaired electron. And so we'll bring this, this into play now. So there's the methyl radical just formed. This is going to react with some chlorine, stable chlorine molecules, haven't been broken up yet. And so this gets the electron at once from one of the chlorines in this molecule. So we form CH3Cl and we produce another radical the chlorine radical. The final part of the mechanism is known as the termination stage and this is basically where two, any two free radicals combine to form a stable molecule. So you can pick any ones that you want. So you could have a chlorine radical and a methyl radical and they would produce a stable molecule so you'd get CH3Cl with those two. So that's two radicals making a stable. So that's opposite to initiation, which was a stable forming two radicals. 
Another termination step you could get would be two methyl radicals and they would form an ethane molecule, CH3CH3. So sometimes you see in exam questions suggest why small traces of ethane are also produced by this reaction. And the other one you could have would be two chlorine radicals producing some stable Cl2. I'm just going to consider now what could happen if there was excess of chlorine present. So what that means basically is there's too much chlorine then there's more chlorine sorry than you, you really need to react with the methane and that's going to mean that there are very very large quantities of these chlorine radicals in the vessel that this takes place in. So I've left the first pair of propagation steps on that we looked at before where we've made chloromethane. Now if there's a large quantity of these hopefully you can see what could happen you basically get another pair of propagation steps taking place whereby you have this excess radical so chlorine radical would react with the stable molecule the CH3Cl that you've just made and this chlorine radical would strip out the next hydrogen and so we'd end up with CH2 two Cl radical and HCl as the stable molecule and because that is a radical now it's very reactive so we bring this into the second propagation step of the pair CH2 Cl dot plus a stable chlorine molecule remember it's in excess and we're going to get CH2 Cl2 and that will become a chlorine radical and then if there was still plenty of this around you get another pair of steps and you'd get CH2Cl2 chlorine radical this is going to strip out the next hydrogen so you'd end up with CHCl2 dot and HCl very reactive and so we get another step CH Cl2 dot plus stable chlorine and you get CH Cl3 as your stable and a chlorine radical and that will just keep going by another pair of steps until ultimately you produce CCl4 and then it would stop because there's no more hydrogens left for the chlorine radicals to take off. So if chlorine's in excess, we get these further substitutions. If you want to prevent that, you make sure that the methane is in excess.